Obviously disappointed in, in the loss on, on Saturday night. Uh, thought we had um, ample opportunities, really good start uh, in, uh, in the second quarter uh, that kind of got us through the first half. And um, I thought some guys really stepped up and played when we had some guys injured. I uh, thought Will Howard uh, was was extremely good, extremely confident and poised when he came in, ripped some balls, ran the ball well, led the offense, did some really good things. Uh, another guy that jumps out of me is Nick Allen. Uh, Daniel Green went out, and, and Nick came in, and I thought played a, a terrific game. Uh, all that being said, um, in the second half, we didn't, uh, uh, we didn't capitalize on opportunities. We... Um, made some mistakes on defense with uh, some alignments, um, missed some tackles, um, gave up a long third down <clears throat> with a screen pass that um, we can't have happen, but it did. And they capitalized on that and, and uh, got a touchdown and gave up an explosive play, the one that Julius uh, got hurt on. Um, so those were another 14 point or another seven points there. And then, you know, we moved the ball uh, some in the second half, although we didn't have it very much because we didn't uh, get enough stops on defense at all. We just uh, we'd get into scoring range and and um, didn't capitalize. Um, missed a, a one field goal that uh, um, you know Will went down on that play, and I thought about going for it on fourth down, but didn't want to put uh, Rubes in that spot when with Will went down. Uh, probably wish I would have at that time now, uh, but I didn't. And then uh, um, you know. Will just miss fires on a ball decade, or it's 38 35. And, uh, you know, maybe we have a chance after that, but uh, we didn't make that play and then uh, um, miss that kick. And then it was a 10 point game and not much time was left. So proud as heck of the guys' effort uh, and resolve. Um, they know that they missed opportunities and had an opportunity to win that game over a really good TCU team. I think they're a complete team on, on all three phases. And, and all that being said, I still thought we had an opportunity. We just didn't. Uh, we didn't close it out, and uh, so we got to go back to to work this week. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of guys beat up that I don't probably have a lot of information for you um, just after a Monday practice. But uh, uh, we'll see um, who's available. But in, in hindsight, or in retrospect, we've got to move forward with the guys that we know are going to practice, and those guys got to be ready to play. Well, you just said there's not a lot you can share, so of course I'll ask you about yep. it. Yep. Um, but they, the, many of those injuries appeared to be not season ending, just correct. a lot of wear and tear. Co co correct. I think more than wear and tear. Um, um, but the, I don't think we lost anybody for the season. I, in fact, I'm positive we didn't lose anybody for the season. But there's a handful of guys that left the game early enough that I don't know if they'll be ready for this game or not. Um, there's some other guys that were hopeful that um, – based on muscular, based on whatever, uh, I'll talk to the trainers and the trainers will talk to the doctors. It's not just something where, yeah, we'll rub a little dirt on it and let them go and be ready to play. Um, they've got to be effective when they're ready to play. And, and so um, time's going to time's gonna tell this week. We're, we're going to ha not have some answers legitimately probably till uh, Thursday on a few guys. I'm going to pull a friction here and pull out some statistics. Okay. And but I want to be clear that I did not do any of this work. You um, did. <clears throat> uh, one one of our okay. subscribers. <laughs> uh, now he threw out the the pandemic season because that was just an aberration okay. of a season. Um, in games that you have led at halftime or were tied, mm -hmm. if you score in the third quarter, field goal or anything, you're 13 to zero. Okay. In games in which you don't score and you led or tied at, at halftime, mm -hmm. you're six and five. Yep. Does that just underscore the um, importance of coming out of that locker room and regaining the momentum? Um, probably. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, lead into that. It's not just one side of the ball or the other. It's not probably a call here or there. Um, sometimes you got to give credit to where credit's due, and I thought TCU was a, you know, go to that game. Uh, I thought it's a pretty good football team, and um, they did some nice job of making of adjustments, and you know, I, I, Colin and I talked about it. I mean, we, we struggled um, to get points on the board in the second half. Uh, I talked to Joe about it. We struggled more of, of correctable things. We just didn't tackle very well. So, um, you know, that, that stat is what it is. Um, and also, you look at what TCU does offensively, they're pedal to the metal. 
They they just don't they what they did in the first quarter and the fourth quarter didn't seem to really change. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of what you need to do in this conference with these offenses that can score so quickly to come back on you? Try to is to do what? I'm sorry. Just keep trying to score and don't yeah, try yeah, to manage you, the clock too early. Yeah, um, and I don't think we tried to manage the clock too early um, by any means. Um, but that's – I mean, they, they run a lot of plays. Texas Tech runs a lot of plays. Oklahoma runs a lot of plays. Everybody's trying to run a lot of plays. We're running more plays. Uh, all that being said, um, you know, their first drive was an eight-minute drive, not a two-minute drive. And in that eight-minute drive, we've got a third and 17 and they get an 18-yard screen play. You can take statistics all you want and throw that out the window. we got to make a play. Um, and uh, um, we, we run the wrong route, or we've got a kid wide open um, going into, um, I don't know, what the north end, and uh, we run the wrong route, or it would be a touchdown. Um, and uh, so little plays, but we got to make those plays. That's the bottom line. It just comes down to however fast you are on offense, whatever you do on defense. I, you know, Jacob Parrish – has a pick, foot's barely out of bounds. That takes points off the board. Uh, I thought Sincere made a really good play on a break on a ball um, that um, it's a 50-50 ball. Their, their kid really knocked away from Sincere. It just comes down to little things, little plays here and there. And uh, at times we're making them, and at times we're not. So specifically on Adrian, would he be trending as one of those game time decisions this week? Yeah. Um, uh, he didn't do anything yesterday. Um, I don't know if he'll be available. I, I, I don't. Um, you know, last week uh, we tempered some things with him in practice, and uh, he felt pretty good. And uh, as the game got started, he couldn't go. And that's the bottom line. And um, that's Adrian, the medical people, and, and our trainers. And um, luckily we had Will Howard that could come in and play. That's played football for us. And, and so I hope Adrian's available. I don't know if he'll be available. Um, and there's other kids like that. And so, you know, we, we tried to manage our way through Deuce Vaughn being banged up. And he carried the ball as not as many times as he typically does. We hope Deuce is healthier this week. We'll, we'll see. What do you think you learned about your linebacker core that you didn't go into that game having to shuffle so many guys in without Daniel? Well, we just had to play more plays. Um, I, I didn't learn anything about Nick Allen because I think Nick Allen's a starting linebacker and a really good linebacker. Um, and he just gets opportunities. He just makes plays. Uh, I think Austin Moore's playing as good as any linebacker that we've had here. So w- when Deuce went down, other than the depth, we didn't miss anything as far as Nick can make plays. And Deuce knows that as well. We played Bo Palmer that hadn't played any plays. And he played some some snaps, and that was good for Bo. Uh, and I talked to Bo yesterday. You may have to play significant amount of snaps this week. Gavin Forche may have to play significant amount of snaps this week. We know Des Purnell is going to have to play significant amount of snaps this week with Khalid missing the first half. Um, but at least we know all these things on Monday, and we're able to practice those guys Monday through Thursday as opposed to – a guy gets hurt on in the first quarter, a guy gets hurt in the first half, and now those guys are thrust into it. Although they've practiced, you guys are well aware that the ones get more reps than the twos. Um, now those twos are going to get more reps this week, and the threes become the twos. And um, Kansas State's not the only team that's beat up. That I know for a fact. And so nobody's going to feel sorry for you. Um, it's the next man up mentality, and whoever is out there, we have confidence as a staff, we have confidence as a football team that they're going to allow us and give us an opportunity to be successful. Will Howard, do you have a clarity on him? Is he looking looking like he'll go? Yeah, he 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 will be able to play. Yeah, Will Will got banged up as we know, and he came back into the game. Um, so his was something that. Um, the trainers were able to address, and uh, if Adrian doesn't go, then Will will play. Coach, you've got two big running quarterbacks. Is there a specified Wildcat quarterback outside of your quarterback room? Um, there could be. Uh, I haven't talked to Colin if that's something he's looking at. It's just it. it there's some positives to it about giving another guy uh, the ball back there, putting Deuce and DJ back there or something is a similar thing. But it changes what you do defensively, not knowing if those guys can throw now. I know that they can, but that still, it's different. You know, do you, do you even cover some guys? And so um, uh, that's some, probably a question for Colin. Where is Toby Osatomi in his development? And is he Sam or Mike linebacker? 
Uh, he could be Sam, or he could be a Mike, or he could be a Will. Right now, he's playing special teams for us. He's not ready to play defense. We have a few games for, for Toby, and we chose to use one of those against uh, TCU because of the amount of injuries that we have. Um, we have to make the decision uh, if we would use him this week. Um, we haven't decided that. He's in the mix for special teams, not right now for defense. Uh, Jake Clifton would be really kind of the next guy up on, on defense. And Jake, we're playing uh, as a true freshman. We've already decided that he's on all the special teams. And um, he'll get some of that work um, along with Crew Jackson in replace of Khalid for that first half. Pinpoint the screenplay, the third and seventeen, the breakdowns. Was I wish I could. We we didn't um, we didn't retrace well enough uh, on the defensive front, and I didn't think we attacked it well enough uh, in the back eight. You know, we rushed three, uh, and uh, we didn't attack it well enough. Um, didn't get off a, of a block, and it something that um, you know, I. I Told you know Joe was beating him himself up, and we were all in defense saying that's made a good call. We got to make a play, and we didn't make a play. With Duke out for the first half, do you have to do anything differently in practice with maybe getting Purnell more reps with the first team? Yep, he just makes that switch, and and Khalid will take more of the reps with the twos, knowing that he's going to get a chance to play in the second half. But you got to also give another guy reps because if Des gets banged up or needs a, a blow, which he's going to based on how many plays that Oklahoma State's going to run against us. Uh, you got to have another guy ready, and that's where I think Jake Clifton or Crew Jackson will come into play. Gundy, I kind of discussed having to navigate some of your guys' injuries, but do you have to do the same thing for Oklahoma State? They got a, quite a few players out as well. Yeah, uh, and that's what I'm saying. Nobody feels sorry for anybody. Uh, everybody's got some injuries right now, um, and um, who, who, as you go out there and, and your GAs and stuff check people off to say if they're there and not there, it's probably easier at home to disguise or hide somebody because you don't have to count them uh, like you do on the road when they're 70 and you know, that, oh, this kid's not on the trip even. Um, you, you know, you, you still got to see what they do schematically and realize that you're probably not going to make wholesale changes schematically, which we won't either offensively or defensively based on um, – Nick Allen playing and not Daniel Green or Dez and not Khalid. Yeah, there's a different skill set and some things. Um, same thing uh, at the quarterback position. Uh, but um, you, you can't, it's too late in the season on three days of prep, basically. Plus, you got a lot of guys beat up to say, hey, we're going to all of a sudden go to a four down or all of a sudden going to go to a whole different scheme offensively. Is there a position group that comes to mind or, or a phase of your team that you know you have to get more out of than what you currently are to accomplish what you want? Uh, no, it's probably every – I mean, every, every position needs to, to probably give a little bit more, play a little bit better. I, I think, you know, I look at our offensive line with a bunch of veteran kids that are playing well. Um, they missed a couple of IDs that I'm sure they're kicking themselves, saying, man, we had a chance to score. Uh, and I know one play and a second play would have been an explosive play, and we miss ID'd something, or we have a hat on everybody um, and a chance to score. And that was those were in the second half. So um, it's – it's collectively we all can probably give a little bit more. Coach, obviously you don't want this to happen, but if you were in the same situation you were last week down to the third quarterback, who would be the fourth quarterback? Jaron. Yep, and Jaron will Jaron will take some snaps this week, um, and he always has taken a few snaps. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now we'll go with Will and then um, Jake and Jaron and we'll find out as the week goes on with Adrian. The positive thing about Adrian, he's an older guy, um, sees a lot of pictures, very intelligent at practice. Um, we need to see him going full speed so that he feels comfortable going full speed. And if that happens on Thursday and he can go, then we'll play him. If he can't do it on, on Thursday, then we probably won't. You know, you, you talked about injuries being a part of the game as well. But on Oklahoma State side, like Derek mentioned, there's a lot of injuries for them. Does it make it harder for you to game plan personnel-wise simply because you don't know who's going to play for them? No, not really. No, I, I'd say the same thing about them. They're not going to uh, ch change what they do based on if Will Howard or Adrian Martinez is the quarterback. And we can't do it based on any of the injuries that they've had. And, and uh, um, you know, you get a body of work when you've played somebody the last – uh, three years like we have, uh, and, and they're part of our self-scout in, in the spring and the summer, um, that um, they're going to do what they do and we're going to do what we do. And on 
Saturday seemed to be a lot more um, down the field, play action throws. Mm -hmm. Was that just kind of uh, something you saw from TCU's defense you felt like you could take advantage of? No, we were listening to you guys of the short passing game, started to throw it deep. You know, I just it just burned in my mind, Fitz. You know, and, and I finally said to Colin in the first quarter, we've got to make some changes. <laughs> I don't talk to my own. <laughs> um, I thought it was some things that we saw that we could uh, um, take some shots on and, and be aggressive on some things. Cade Warner made a phenomenal play. Even when the ball was in the air, I think we were all like, uh-oh, because I thought the kid was going to pick it. And Cade made a great play. Um, I think it was the play before or two plays before, I thought Will ripped the ball into Phillip between two, um, between two defenders. And on Malik's play that was almost a touchdown, I thought Will ripped it between – uh, over a linebacker between a safety and a corner. It was fun It was fun to see Will having that kind of confidence. And I thought D.J. Giddens made as good a catch as, as I've seen as a running back. And I thought Will threw it in a spot that only D.J. could catch it. So uh, those are confidence-boosting things, not only for, for Will, but I think for the entire offense that, you know, we can stretch the field because we have some, uh, some guys that can go get the football. Spencer Sanders, one of those guys on Saturday against Texas, might not play, but he ended up playing. And what your thoughts on Spencer Sanders this season? Yeah, he's he's a competitor. He's you know we're going in from the fire to the next one with uh, Duggan to, uh, to Spencer Sanders. Spencer Sanders is is um, is been really good against us the last three years, and um, you know he's got a good supporting cast. They're, they're big up front. He's got a number of people that he can distribute the ball to, but uh, he can beat you with his arm and he can beat you with his legs. And, you know, I did not get a chance to watch the uh, most of the game. I saw, obviously, clips and stuff of the Texas-Oklahoma uh, State game, but I watched the first quarter and a half, and um, it looked to me like Texas had control a little bit. And then you have a kid like that that can flip it that fast, and he did, and they made some stops on defense. I thought they played really good defense from from watching it on tape uh, in the second half and shut some things down that they weren't able to do that first half, and then I thought Spencer was really good in that second half. Back to your defense. For a lot of the game, you didn't have Daniel Green, and you mentioned defense needed to make some plays, and it didn't happen. Kind of a tough question to ask, but – is it tough to keep momentum sometimes on defense when you don't have a Daniel Green out there, the quarterback of the defense? No, we just can't let one play affect us to the next play. You know, and that's the thing that it's it's human nature. Um, somebody gets beat on a play or we don't get off the field on a third and five and they get a first down and then we're thinking about that one and rather than it being second and eight, our issue was I thought Miller was a great running back. I thought he was exceptional. We have him hit for second and eight and second and nine, and somehow it's second and four and second and three. That's demoralizing because now you're not getting into those third and longs where you can let Felix and Nate and Eli and, and some of those guys lay their ears back and rush. They've got to play, you know, kind of a, a run pass deal on third and short. And, um, you know, so it, uh, not having Deuce, not having Julius. I was proud of Jacob Parrish. Um, Parrish played most of the second half. I thought he did a really nice job. Um, you know, but it uh, it's the next guy up, and all these kids are going to get a lot of opportunities this week in practice. With uh, on defense, are any of the guys ruled out, or Deuce or uh, or Julius? Do you think there's a chance they'll play? Um, I would say it's a better chance of Julius right now. And I know Deuce is getting some other things done today, but I I won't probably know until late to, late this afternoon what they find out. Also, with the quarterback run game, uh, even though Will's a good runner, it seems like they're different types of runners. Yeah. Does that change some of the things you you do in that respect? Well, one's two twenty and one's two forty five, you know, and so Will is going to have to go get north and south and. Uh, Stick it up in there. Um, Adrian, you're right. It's a little different. He's going to try to uh, – he can stick it up in there and he's going to beat you on the edge and stuff. And, and Will's not slow by any means. Um, but they they are able to operate their, our offense pretty much the same. I don't see uh, Colin making many changes based on who's playing quarterback uh, because they both have a skill set that allows them to, to run the football. 
I totally just lost my thought there. <laughs> it's probably about deep passes. Okay, no, I got it. I'm sorry. Um, spe special teams, first couple games you had some big plays there. Haven't had them necessarily no. in the last few. What's it going to take to get that back uh, back going? Yeah, um, I thought we had a really good kick return on Saturday that almost busted, probably should have busted for a touchdown. Um, we had a guy clean on a punt, and we missed the block, or we would have blocked a punt. So um, to kind of the same thing we were talking about, we have a couple of opportunities where it's there and we didn't finish the play. And so um, we've got to keep doing what we're doing because I like the schemes we're drawing up. Um, but uh, we just didn't make a couple of plays that uh, uh, in the past probably we would have made. And uh, so some of that is young guys and they're learning and we have to play those young guys. They're going to be better for it. Um, but um, uh, we're going to keep believing that we have two good returners in Malik and Phil and try to get them the football. And as you guys have seen, punting is just way different nowadays. I mean, there's so many rugby styles. There's so many different formations. Um, you know, the ball's going to hang up there. This one is a windy game, so it was a tough one into the wind to be able to get a chance to return a punt. But uh, without question, that's a phase that uh, we are – we've been probably even with the last couple of weeks that we need to be uh, – having it as an advantage what has your message been to chris Tennant lately is it still the golf analogies you're gonna yeah try something you know different? um that's a that's a good question um chris is busting his tail uh he um missed one probably that i think he should have made the other one i think uh was a 50 50 one that uh, i could have probably bailed him out and went for it on fourth and two but um um i didn't and he would have said coach i can make that kick anyway um we're and, and Chris has talked about this. We've we've had a conversation with him. Um, we're going to evaluate this week. Uh, Ty may kick one, uh, a PAT or a field goal to get get us going. Um, might see a freshman out there in Leighton Simmering. He might kick one. Um, not that we're truly opening the competition, but we're going to have some competition out there this week, and I think that'll fuel Chris. Um, I know that Ty's excited because he just he loves to be out there, and uh, I, I think. Um, uh, Leighton even has a chance. So um, we're going to kick uh, another day this week when we typically would and uh, see how it plays out. And Chris is fine with that. I mean, Chris, Chris knows that he's, he's got to perform. And I've, I've got the utmost confidence in Chris, but uh, we've got to make sure and, and um, continue to, to have competition. You've already touched on this in the past in, in some ways or another, but how, how rare is it to have, especially in the transfer portal area, to have a guy like Will Howard on your team? <laughs> um, well, it's huge because of uh, the opportunity Will had as a true freshman here. And a lot of things uh, went awry in that pandemic year, but he grew a ton from that year. And then he was going to sit that year, then sit this year, or sit last year, and then Sky got hurt and we had to play him. Um, and he's a team guy. And then this year, we kind of made it a competition. But if he didn't win the competition, we were going to do everything we could to preserve his year um, for him, uh, hopefully at Kansas State. I think that's his plan, and that's our plan, as he stays at Kansas State. Uh, I don't go up to Will Howard and say, I hope you're not transferring today, because Will Howard's not that guy. Will Howard loves K-State. And I think everybody that had any doubts about Will Howard or doubted Will Howard either was like, ooh, maybe I was wrong about that kid. But I know this. I smiled ear to ear for him because he's he's dealt with a lot of ridicule for a couple of years. And he he just goes to work. On Friday, great example. He has no idea if he's gonna play a snap at all. And on Friday, we're doing all of our meetings and stuff. He's out on our out on our game field with a net throwing and throwing and throwing and working his own craft. Not because he figured Adrian was going to play three plays, but just because he wants to continue to improve and continue to get better and continue to push it so that when his opportunity comes, whether it was last week, this week, or whenever it is, he would be ready. That's the sign of a winner. That's the sign of a competitor. That's the sign of the culture that we want here, that you have a kid that says, if I'm not the guy, I'm going to prepare. I'm going to prepare like I am, and when that opportunity comes, I'm not missing it. I'm not missing it. And 
to watch him play last week. I was so excited for him, and every one of our t- every guys on the team were excited for him. And so he's going to play this week to whatever everybody's asked so far. Adrian's not out for the year. And so we still feel like we have three left with Will. That's why we didn't play him in South Dakota and Missouri to end the game and stuff, so that we could be strategic about when he would play. He may not play this week. Adrian may be fine to play. I don't have any idea. But if he's not, Will's going to play. And then we still have two more games. No, or we wouldn't have a lot of guys playing on Saturday. Um, <laughs> and it's it's difficult because part of it is how long have you been in the program? What what do you know about the defense? What you know, Daniel Green's missed some time in practice this year, um, but Daniel Green's played so much football. Uh, Felix has missed some time. He knows he's played so much football. If it's Nick Allen. You know, he's. I know what he can do. It's harder when you have a young player that needs to see pictures. And it, there's a fine line between all these guys that are hurt that you hope play and you say, let's not practice very much. Let's just walk through for all these guys and so that they see, quote, the pictures. That's really important to us to see the pictures. Our coaches are always saying, we got to see the pictures, got to see the pictures. But to a younger player, to see the picture but not see it full speed probably isn't helping them that much. So this is a prime week for us to say, Cooper Beebe's going to practice anyway. And Cooper would say, we'll go as long as you need me to go, Coach. And Gilly and Hadley and KT and Duff, all those guys are healthy, and they're going to practice. And if that means we got to practice an extra 10 minutes so that we get a backup corner, a backup linebacker, Dez, a backup safety, more reps, then we're going to do that so that those guys are ready to play when it comes full speed. And last week we probably backed off a little bit too much hoping some guys would be healthy and ready to go. Not 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 just Adrian. A lot of guys um, that were still nicked up from the Iowa State game, and it probably set back some of the guys that all of a sudden were thrust into that role. So this week uh, we'll walk through a much shorter period of time. Those guys can learn off the film, but we're practicing these guys that probably are going to play. Can you describe what the process of getting ready to play is for an injured player who doesn't have much to do in practice other than the walkthrough that you mentioned? Yeah, um, they're they're in with Mindy and her crew all day long. They start at 7 in the morning with treatments, somehow go to class, come back, get a weight room session in, and that's typically probably modified with with True, back in with, with Mindy and her crew, um, go grab a bite to eat, um, come back, do more treatment, meet with the coaches, and then during practice – we have them seeing the pictures, but there are certain times where I know they're not going to be needed, and they'll go with True if they can ride a bike, if they can do something else to try to keep their cardio going. And then the process starts again after practice with more treatment. And it sucks to be injured. I'm just telling you guys to think, oh, this, you know, it, it's, it's a grind on those guys, a grind as much mentally as it is physically because of the amount of time that they have to spend. And is that required? It's required because they want to play. So um, it's a, it's a it's a long week for him, long day for him. You guys obviously still control your own destiny, coach. Is that something that you have to grind into the players this week? Uh, they know it for sure. We've talked about it. Uh, we talked about it yesterday. Uh, everything uh, is still in front of us, um, and uh, but it's all about our preparation. And it's this is the next opportunity. Now we got five one week seasons left, and we've got a really good Oklahoma State team playing uh, coming in here to uh, to play. And we haven't been at home for a while, so it's going to be kind of fun to be back out at the Bill. But uh, uh, they're well aware of all the circumstances. One other thing, uh, Coach Kennedy in his news conference really had some nice things to say about the college atmosphere here at, at Kansas State. What kind of home field advantage is that for you guys? It's a great home field advantage, you know, with our band, with our student section, with our community, um, and the fact that it's going to uh, be sold out again uh, for our players. That uh, I'm, I'm excited for our guys to be. It's been since October 1st since we've been back here. That's a long time, and um, you know, the fact that we've played three of our first conference games on the road and we're three and one. You know what? We're, we're going to we're doing okay if we come to work this week and have a great week and and 
lay it on the line. Um, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, uh, I'm not disappointed in our guys at all. I mean, we're we're five and two and three and one in the league, and you guys know how tough this league is. And uh, uh, we've gotten two big road road wins. We had a chance to get one and didn't get it done, and now we get to come back home.